So, I was watching this video from the greatest atheist of all time, Paul G. Yeah, greatest atheist of all time. I've said that before. And he was, the video is on objective morality and William Lane Craig's syllogism of such. Now, the Craig syllogism isn't really successful. Um, it actually falls apart of the first premise. Objective morals and duties exist. Okay, that's an assertion. That needs to be proved. You can't just say that. That's not like the door is the door. You know, you can't just say that. That's an assertion. So that, as far as I'm concerned, the, the, the syllogism falls apart right there. But in Paul's video, okay, Paul makes a really astute observation right at the beginning of the video. As far as I know, it's unique to him. That there is no such thing as objectively up. Yeah, no such thing as objectively up. There is only objectively up in relation to something else. In other words, I am standing here. Now there is up from where I'm standing and down from where I'm standing. But there is no such thing as a free-floating objectively up. That is a really, really astute observation. But it also applies to morality and helps to clarify why it is so difficult to talk about morality. There is such a thing as objective morality. Doesn't necessarily prove that God exists, but there most certainly is such a thing as objective morality. But it is only in relation to a moral act. That's where the confusion comes from. We try to talk about morals, generally speaking. And generally speaking, it's all vague and kind of subjective. Oh, you know, who can say what's right and wrong? Well, no, we all can say what's right and wrong. And we all do. But it's only in relationship to a given moral act. See, I pointed out in the past. The Bible says eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. That gets misinterpreted. That is actually a really, really complex philosophical, that is a really, really complex philosophical idea given voice to the only way ancient people could know how. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. What does it actually mean? It means there is no such thing as moral action without moral consequence. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth. How does that apply to this? Because when you take morality into the world of the actual, here is a given moral act. We all know, we all kind of, sort of know that there is an absolute wrong and an absolute right in relation to a given deed. Always. Matter of fact, the entire legal system is predicated on this assumption. All legal systems would be incoherent. All legal systems would be incoherent if this were not so. Here is a given moral act. And we all know for a fact that there is an absolute right and an absolute wrong in relation to that deed. You harm a small child for no reason. That's wrong. Plain and simple, that's wrong. That's how our legal system works. That's what makes it coherent. In other words, think of it this way. Okay, I, Craig, you know, really, really bad hombre. Everybody, everybody understands that around here. You know, I walk out the door, people fear me. Why? Because I can just gun a man down in cold blood. I'm just like that. I'm gangster like that. The other day, guys, looking at my shoes. I'm walking out the door. He's looking at my shoes. Like, you, you, you think you think you're looking at these shoes? You're looking at these shoes? You better back the f up, son. You better back the f up, son. You think I'm playing around? Pop, pop, pop to the dome. Gun him down in cold blood, just like that. Cause I'm hardcore like that. I'm a bad man. You don't want to play with me. So I gun the guy down in cold blood. You're like, that's wrong, Craig. Yeah, that's wrong. That's just plain wrong, Craig. Yeah, it's just plain wrong. And if I got caught, I'd go to jail for life because it's murder in cold blood. Uh, what is it? First degree murder. Even our legal code talks about mor morality with degrees. There are only degrees in, in, in relationship to a true north, to a standing point, to a standing reference, objectively speaking. There's no such thing as there are degrees of culpability in a given act. So, same situation. The other day, I killed three kids. This time, I do it driving. Uh, yeah, I'm not a very good driver. <laughs> I, killed, I killed three kids driving. You know, I'm driving down the street, and three kids are running around like, ah! Kill him. Mom's freaking out. Hey, you killed my kids. You killed my kids. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. So I can't believe you killed my kids. I said I was sorry. You know, what do you want? <laughs> they shouldn't be running all over the place. Jeez. Give a guy a break. Do I go to jail for life? No. Is it is the same result, taking of a life, but it's called vehicular manslaughter. Why? Because I didn't mean to do it. There are degrees of culpability involved in any given moral action, legally speaking. That couldn't be legally speaking if it weren't in fact true, and we all sort of know it's true. 
And if you don't know it's true, don't brag about that. <laughs> we all sort of know it's true. You say, I, you, this is why it gets so confusing, because you talk to people who pretend to be moral subjectivists for the purposes of the argument or the conversation, but there's no such thing as a person in real life who is. Honestly, there isn't. I was debating, what's his face? Skyler. Does Skyler steal? No. Why? Because it's wrong. And he knows it's wrong, so he won't do it, <laughs> because he knows it's wrong. So the Bible's actually correct. The law will be written in men's hearts. It already kind of is. We, already all, we all already kind of know that there is an absolute right and wrong, but it is only in relationship to an actual, to an act or a deed. Then we know. And then there is a discoverable, discernible, if we don't automatically know, okay, there is a discoverable, discernible, can be ferreted out to be discovered right and wrong of a given act. It's not confusing then. When you put it in the context of an action, it's not confusing at all. There's, a, there's, a, there's an absolute right and an absolute wrong. And we all kind of know what, what, what it is in any given situation. You say something like, generally speaking, is it wrong to lie? So you can't put it in the context of the general. Is it wrong to lie? Yeah, generally speaking, so. But I'm hiding Jewish people in my basement. Nazi, a Nazi knocks on the door. Do you have Jews in the basement? I lie. <laughs> no, no, why would you think that? Of course not. I lie, right to his face. Yeah, oh my God, what a liar. It's the right thing to do in that situation. Have you Jew, have you Juden in the basement? Yeah, that's my, that's my Nazi soldier. Pretty good, right? <laughs> you know, it's stupid. <laughs> I thought it was fun. It's not fun, it's stupid. All right. Haven't seen, haven't seen the Juden in the basement? <laughs> no, no, sir, I do not. I would never do that. Heil Hitler. That's what I say to him. I say, no, sir, there's, no, there's absolutely no Jews in this house. This, this house is Juden free. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. I lie right to his face. And it's the right thing to do in that context. Generally speaking, lying, that's why it seems like morals are subjective. Because if you can think of situations where it, it isn't really clear cut because you're not marrying it to moral action. You're just talking vaguely. Vaguely, it's subjective. Everything is subjective when you're talking in general terms. But if you specify it down to an actual given act, <clears throat> no, there's a right and wrong. And the legal code is predicated on that. There may be differences in opinion about what is absolute right and absolute wrong in a given situation, but there certainly is a knowable right and wrong. A knowable, quantifiable right and and wrong of a given moral action. Morals are objective. As far as I'm concerned, that's case closed. Honestly, that's case closed. That's where the confusion comes from. See, Paul Gia, Paul Gia, what, that's why he's the greatest atheist of all time. <clears throat> because he helps us. You see what he's doing? He's helping us. He makes a video that challenges us to think more clearly on the subject. So we improve. He doesn't realize that his atheism is, you know, performing a service for we, the Christian community. But that's why he's the greatest atheist of all time. I don't know one of the reasons. I don't know. Whatever. All right. That didn't really work. All right. That's enough for now. Morality is objective. Morality is objective. It's just like the, you know, actually, Matt Dillahunty and Sam Harris are correct in this. They always relate it to a chess game. Just like you know in a chess move which game is going, which move is going to, objectively speaking, produce a better result in terms of winning the game. It is similar in moral, but you have to take it into the specific. You have to specify. Here is this action. Now we have a, this action is right. That action was wrong. Period. Full stop. And we know it in almost every circumstance under the sun. Or can discover it in almost every circumstance under the sun. That's all for now. Amen.